Hello. Welcome to a new edition of Firewatch. This month on Firewatch, I have several different types of fires to show you. We've been busy this month with some of the fires here in Danville, and uh, we want to look at a way to try to prevent these fires from happening to you. Now I'm standing at one of the homes we had. The cause of this fire was discarded smoking material. Uh, one of the occupants here had been smoking a cigarette and uh, he came out and just threw it out. It was a chair sitting in this area, this area here with some clothing and other items. And apparently he may have thought he put it out, but the cigarette did not go out. It completely burned the chair up. This is what left of the chair that was sitting here. As you can see, it's an office type chair. And uh, there was a, a box fan also sitting here and some other items. And apparently the cigarette was thrown, tossed onto the chair, which started a fire. You can see where the, uh, the siding, the outside siding completely burned up and it went up all the way up to the roof and on just on the inside of this home is a little dining area. Our firefighters got here pretty quick and uh, to minimize the damage inside. They did have to pull the ceilings inside to check the attic for extension. If you can look a little bit right here into the window, you can see where so much heat built up, it started to uh, melt the, uh, the blinds inside. So um, the charring on the floor of, of this deck is a wooden deck. There was a lot of burning here for a long time. This house is like on a, a dead end road, so it burned a pretty good while before someone was able to spot it. And I encourage anyone that, uh, that, sm that smoke to be careful with your cigarettes or cigars or whatever you're using to make sure that you completely pump, uh, put them out. Uh, use a deep dish ashtray, get a bucket of water to put it in, something to check and double check to make sure this event does not happen um, in your home. It doesn't take long, it's an accident, but uh, as you can see, these people will be out of their home for quite a while until they can get it uh, fixed again so they can live here. One other thing while we're talking about these, here in the city of Danville, I often uh, investigate fires and the occupants that rent do not have insurance. It's a good time, a good opportunity to think about rentals insurance. Uh, if you have a vehicle or something like that, you may want to tie it in together and a lot of times your insurance carrier will give you some type of, of discount. So uh, just a little hint to you, uh, the owner may have insurance on his property, on a house, but it does not cover your property. It doesn't cover your furniture, your clothes, your stereo, your television. So you might want to check into that to make sure that you're fully covered in the event of a fire in your home. Okay, I've made my way over to another fire that we had recently here in the city of Danville. Same type of fire, discarded smoking material. Now you see here, I'm standing, I'm looking at a mulch bed outside of a restaurant. Uh, people going in and out, last thing they want to do is get that last puff and throw the cigarette down. And this is what happened. The cigarette rolled right up under, uh, this is kind of like some type of press board. It rolled right up under, hit the mulch right here. Um, it hadn't rained any, so it was extremely dry out here. And they had a little fire where the fire got ahead of itself and started burning all the way up until some employees started smelling smoke and they came out and I was able to um, spot the fire. The fire department got here pretty quick and was able to put it out. So this is basically the damage that you see. Uh, they were very fortunate here that uh, this didn't happen after hours at night. Um, in my history of being in the fire department here in Danville, this has happened several times. We've had restaurants to, uh, with mulch outside to where the customers are throw a cigarette down. Um, we had one that was a total loss. The others, we were able to respond fast enough to be able to uh, stop the fire from doing any, um, any damage, no more than what we see here. Now, on this parking lot, if you look around, you will see cigarette butts. It's lots of them around here, and this is what happened. So they're, they're all around. We have some here, some here, here, and here. So this, this is not only uh, good advice for in a business. At home, be extremely careful. 
Um, people having lots of picnics in the yards, cookouts, graduation parties, all types of parties. And smokers, they're not going to smoke in your house pretty much now. So they would do it outside. So take the time, uh, water your mulch beds down. Uh, when they leave, watch your, your grounds, your flower pots on your decks and places like that to make sure no one has left a smoldering cigarette. Now one thing that I do encourage in place of the, uh, the mulch is a decorative rock. You could go to uh, some of the big box stores or some of the landscape, landscape centers here in town and uh, they have all this beautiful rock out there. And you can put the rock down and uh, it will look really nice. Uh, yes, you're gonna have to treat it to keep the weeds from growing in it, but that's a lot safer than uh, having this mulch out there. Unless you can sprinkle it, you can have somebody to constantly water and watch it at all times. Uh, decorative rock has proven to cause less fires than the, what this mulch here can cause. So a word of caution again is to just watch your guest if you're going in somewhere to eat, to make sure that you put your cigarette completely out and not to let this happen. And we have a lot of good places to eat here in, uh, in Danville and we want to be able to maintain that. And uh, you know, when we start having these little accidents and the restaurant had to pay for it, well, your food price is gonna go up. And so we wanna keep that down so we can enjoy our outings out with our families and be more safety conscious. Okay, now we're gonna focus on a different type fire that's familiar to my office here in the city of Danville, and that's unattended cooking. In this house, um, they had some uh, items on the stove and the family was outside and forgot that the stove was on and the smoke alarm went off and one of the family members came in and saw smoke in the kitchen on fire. They had left a frying pan on top of the stove and there was a pizza in the oven, but uh, the oven was not on, just a top burner. This house sustained damage to, uh, to all the cabinets and the stove itself. The firefighters on their arrival they reported light smoke showing from the, uh, the eaves under the carport. Once inside, they quickly discovered that uh, this was a kitchen fire. So they were able to make a quick knockdown, holding the fire to just the kitchen area. Um, the living room and other parts of the house were spared of any damage, maybe some smoke damage, but uh, most of the activity occurred in the kitchen. They were able to um, unplug the stove and get it out and um, put the little fire out on there. But again, unattended cooking is the number one cause of fires in the United States. And again, I say it month after month here in the city of Danville. When you're frying and you're cooking, you must stay in the kitchen and watch it at all times. That oil heats up really fast. It doesn't take long. and It doesn't take a lot of heat to start a fire. Should you have a fire in your kitchen, the best way to put it out is to use a lid to smother it and put it out. If the fire extends too much for you, you may leave out and call as soon as possible um, to get the fire department started and on the way. Even if you put the fire out, still give us a call. Let us come look. Let us come check your cabinets and check the walls to make sure you're not having an extension anywhere else in the house. Now, they had a, a fire extinguisher here, and I think they tried to put it out with the fire extinguisher. So that's one way they try to help themselves. But uh, once the fire was spotted, it was too much for the fire extinguisher. Therefore, the fire department had to um, finish extinguishing it with their hose. Now we have a different type fire. This fire is very, very important. The cause of this fire was children playing with lighter. Um, we really don't have a big problem with that in the city of Danville. We may get one every two or three years, but uh, it's extremely important. We're at the end of the school year now. Children are out and they're out playing. Sometimes mom and dad can't keep an eye on them at all times. Um, they will find lighters and matches. They get curious and they will start playing with them. This fire was set in an upstairs bedroom. There was a closet area and a chair. Apparently the child lit uh, some clothing or something on in the chair or around the chair in the closet. Uh, it did pretty extensive damage in this apartment. Uh, it was occupied with some residents in here, but uh, luckily everyone got out. No one was injured. Uh, the child was able to get out. 
Uh, the grandmother was here. She was able to get out, no injuries occurring. But uh, I want to focus a lot this summer on children and lighters and matches and just some home prevention. The complex uh, managers here, they've asked me to come over and do a series of uh, classes and teaching in um, all their apartment complexes with children and parents. We're inviting the parents too on some fire safety tips to uh, matches and lighters, what to do with them with young children. If you find them, give them to an adult. We're asking the parents to make sure, you know, if you smoke or if you use a lighter for your grill or matches, to make sure you put them away. Teach your children that they are not toys. Make sure that they know the difference in toys and tools. We consider matches and lighters, they're tools for adults, but they're not toys for children. To keep them out of their hands, keep them out of the place, uh, to make sure that they're safe at all times. They are curious. A lot of times we may find lighters to look like little toys. Um, that's one of, one of the things that uh, fire marshals around the United States, we're trying to get rid of those uh, lighters that look like a toy. I have one that looks like a little fire extinguisher, where to a kid, that's a toy. And if it gets in the wrong hands, fires can occur. So just make sure that we keep these out and watch out for them. When you go to the store, uh, not to purchase those unless you're an adult and you can put it somewhere to where the kids can't get to them. So we're going to be safe this summer and if you have a youth group, your church or a civic group that you would like us to come out and talk with your children on uh, fire safety and prevention and what to do with uh, matches and lighters, give us a call at the fire department. Our number is 799-5226 and we'll be happy to come out and spend some time with you this summer. Sparky the Fire Dog here. Make sure your family has a fire escape plan and they practice it twice a year. One important thing to practice is get low and go. Get low and go? If you see or smell smoke, it's important to get low and go. You guys ready to practice? Yeah! Let's give it a try. Smoke rises, so you want to make sure you get low under the smoke or you'll find that the air is safer to breathe. Great job, guys. Protect your family from fire. For more information, visit sparky.org. Now I'm going to shift my focus over to our training department. I have here with me once again Chief Jefferson. He's our training officer here in the fire department. And Chief Jefferson, I see a lot of people out here this afternoon and a lot of um, teams represented from uh, different cities around the state. What's going on here today? We're actually, the um, technical rescue team is having a confined space technician class, which is the highest level you can have for um, confined space. We had several guys who needed it from our team. We hosted it for the Virginia Department of Fire Programs, and we um, let everybody, ask anybody else who wanted to come, and we got 29 people in the class from all over the Tidewater area and Virginia area here for the last two days. Okay, uh, you and I were talking earlier about uh, your team and training. And uh, I think you said this was your fourth for this year, being able to host your fourth uh, session here in Danville, and that's good for our city. Yes, it is. It, it, like I said, we get to host. We um, This is our third one. Our fourth one will be next week, I mean in two weeks. And what it does, it brings everybody here. They stay in motels. They eat here. They make a little bit of money to the economy. And the biggest thing is we get to see each other, and if something big happens, and we have a large event, and they show up, at least we know who they are. we got at least seen them once in our lifetime. Okay, I was just looking around and it looked like uh, they were doing confined space in this area and uh, maybe some rescue here. Uh, kind of bring us up to speed on what was going on. Actually, the class is um, 29 people. It's a large class. What they've done is they divided it and we um, provided our trailer for confined space and the state's got their trailer here and they're doing a confined space rescue in the building and they're also doing another confined space rescue in the um, tunnels built under the um, training center. Okay, how long has this training been going on? Well, this is a 16-hour class. They started at 8 o'clock yesterday morning, and they broke at 5 and started back up first time at 8 o'clock first thing this morning. They've been going nonstop since. Okay. And a little bit about your team. How many members are in the city of Danville team? We have a 27-member team, and we do confined space. Um, we do high-angle rescue, getting people off water towers. We do trench, um, cave-ins. We do structural collapse. And we do some swift water, and we do some um, vehicle extrication. Okay, we've seen you out on your vehicle extrication, and uh, for me, for my division, you've helped me a lot in some fires where you come in and uh, show up some buildings for me uh, so I can get in and do my investigation. 
And uh, that's very important because sometimes when we have these fires, you know, the building is, is uh, a collapse or weakened and it's not safe for Rich and I to go in. And your team has come in and uh, done a lot of work for us. That actually helps us out. I know it's helping you, but, you know, structural collapse, we get to see it. We actually really get to do it and we get to practice our skills. Or we, so if we ever have a collapse here, we can um, be able to do the job professionally. Yeah. Um, just the other day, I think we had a partial collapse. Uh, during the storm um, here at one of our stores. Yeah, we had a um, facade fall off uh, one of the stores off Westover, and we've had a couple of vehicles in the buildings in the last several months, but we've come in and shored up also. Yeah, your team's busy, just like the Hazmat team. You guys are getting out and uh, providing a great service for us, and we're very fortunate uh, to have you. And I see behind me it's uh, your trailer here, and on the other side, it was a different one. Was the, that? the other side is the Virginia Department of Fire Programs trailer. Okay. And uh, tell me some. What cities represented here today? We've got Norfolk here. We got Portsmouth here, Chesapeake, um, Hampton Roads area, um, people up next to Stanton, Augusta County. It's they're all over Virginia here today. Can you tell me a little bit about the uh, confined space and what, what is confined space for our viewers who don't know anything about what it is? Confined space is a limited access, one way in, one way out. It can be an industrial setting or it could be a storm drain where kids are playing in a storm drain and they get trapped. Um, today what they've done is down in the bottom, they've got two patients in a storm, like in a storm drain area and they've got to go in with them. It's, they're saying it's low um, oxygen level so they're having to wear air. They're having, they've got communications, they'll send two in. They'll do like a recon and find them, figure out what they need to get them out. And they get they don't have but so many minutes they can work, like 20, 25 minutes, whatever they set it at. They'll go in and do what they can do, then they'll send another group in to package them. And the next group will come in and bring them out. So it's 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 a it's a lengthy um exercise, it takes two to three hours for it, what to take to do the exercise, especially getting two and three patients out. Usually you're not gonna have but one, but this is like I said, this is a technician level. This is a level they've got to think. They're not really being taught they're taking everything they've got and making it work and, um, and they're coming together as one team. Okay, uh, a lot of times our public works department go in to confined space and you guys are on standby, correct? Yeah, we, um, they notify us when they're in a confined space um, and if they have an incident we'll be there. Uh, we've been called out a couple times with the electric department just to be on scene when they're doing multiple entries. Um, that's what we're here for and you know if somebody gets, a kid gets trapped or if somebody gets trapped in an industrial setting we'll be called out to handle the rescue. Yes, I've, uh, I watch a lot of news, and uh, recently I've seen where uh, people get in these places and can't get out, and the uh, fire department and teams are having to go into these confined spaces and getting them out. And when I say that, it's even the animals. Sometimes they get into space, and we have to get those. We've got a couple of animals out every now and then, but um, the biggest thing is not to play in them. The, you know, the kids think this, they're not they're safe, and you never know when you're going to have a flood or what you're going to get into when you get in them, so you shouldn't be going in the storm drains or any of the um, piping systems within the city. Well, they, they're getting to know our city a little bit here and they're getting to work with uh, with our team and hopefully learning is taking place between um, each team. And they, they are. They, every one of them said they've learned something. Well, Chief Jefferson, thanks for letting us stop by and check in on training and hopefully we'll get to uh, come back and see you on your ropes training. You're welcome. Thank you.